guitar, right? Oh, we could go full on. Well, we get we, we can get Dubs in here. He can he can play it up. Oh. He's got <laughs> albums out. I don't know if he. I don't know what he would do though with his theme song. I think really we need Jeremy to come up with this. It's it's what the bottom line is. Come on, Jeremy. Want a different theme. I've, yeah. I, yeah. I got a million of them. <laughs> Improvise. Improvise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just going to let him let you roll with it. Well, I mean, we'll maybe work it out maybe before the end of the show. Sure. Okay. Closer. <laughs> okay. We could try, yeah, think closer. That's true. We do need think a closer. We need a DT talent contest, I think. Oh. That could happen here on the podcast. Oh. <laughs> okay. But I can judge by, I can tell by this room that's not uh, going to happen. The talent contest. We're not very judgy. Okay. No, not judgy at all. Juan <laughs> is judgy. Well, judgy. Uh, Juan, is, Juan is very judgy. I can well, tell look right at him. Now. I mean, of course and he is. It's yes. true. Not that I'm judgy. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we up and going? Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Trends with Benefits. This is our uh, weekly roundtable tech podcast here at Digital Trends, where we gather tech experts to talk about the trending topics of the day and a lot of other things. We're broadcasting live on Facebook and YouTube, in addition to being a podcast. And because we're on Facebook and YouTube, we'd like to get feedback. We want to hear what you think about what we're talking about, whether you agree or disagree or what your opinions are. And we've got several things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to get down to uh, talking about a flying taxi and whether or not you would get into it or not. I still am not sure if I would. I don't know if I want to take my... I don't know. I don't know. I can tell by the background there's already some discussion <laughs> on this. And we're going to talk about some uh, drone traffic control, so maybe we'll finally get those drone deliveries that we want. A company that wants to upload your brain into the internet, so we're living in a Black Mirror episode right now. But to start off, we want to talk about the best music streaming service. This seems to be a really hot topic lately with a lot of things going on. I mean, iHeart Music did just file for uh, bankruptcy. I think $20 billion in debt. I personally don't even know anybody who was using them, which may be part of the debt, but, uh, but there is that one to discuss. But obviously, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music, Tidal, there's so many of them out there. We want to know which one you use, why you use it, and why maybe you think it's better than anything else. So drop your comments in there. We'll get to those. But let's introduce our cast of characters. We have a star-studded cast here today. Uh, I'm Greg Nibbler. To my right, joining us again, it is Juan. Hello, Juan. Hello. I'm Juan Garcia. I'm the... Uh, the vice president of non-important things oh. here at uh, Yale Trends. And to my right, it's... Marie Pardo-Garber, one of the IT people here, Digital Trends. Excellent. And Not a VP. Uh, <laughs> yes, but in all honesty, you control way more than probably. Right. Yeah, I mean, you control whether That's or not this right. all happens. We're trying to keep yes. that. Yeah, you have. Key, you have. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. That's Do right. not make Marie mad. That's the bottom line. That's what <laughs> no. you have to know. <laughs> and on the end. Hi, it's Jeremy Kaplan, the Hi. editor in chief of Digital Trends. Hello, Jeremy Kaplan. I it is... you were the president of non important oh, well, things. That's the other way of looking at it. <laughs> I'm the vice president. <laughs> that's my understood title oh, okay. versus the actual title. Well, it is excellent to have everybody in here. So we are, again, are broadcasting live here, talking about this, and I'm seeing comments roll in about which music streaming service that uh, that you are into. A lot of people are saying Spotify, obviously, but Google Play Music is one I have not. And, and being an Android person, I've always been an Android person, I still have never really used Google Play Music or the YouTube service that they've combined with them now it's it's honestly it's kind of confusing to me as far as how that's even working out but i want to know opinions from in here now one apple music i am an apple music App user, you yes. are an apple music person you're an apple person i am an through. apple person i buy into the ecosystem of so apple so why are you using apple music just because it's available it's cheap and i do know that spotify it's it's better but i haven't Search for a song, and I listen to a lot of songs in Spanish, you know, uh -huh. that they're not very, you know, uh, popular, I guess. And I haven't found a song that I don't, I mean, I haven't searched for a song that I don't find in, in Apple Music. So for me, it's fine. I understand Spotify will have more, bigger like a library. broader selection. Yeah, but for me, I mean, it works, and it, it plays everywhere. It plays in your Apple TV, it plays, you it's, know, on your phone, on your... Is that part of it because it incorporates with everything, your ecosystem that you're yeah. already living in anyway? Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. so, yeah. And it's, how much is it? I think it's fourteen ninety nine for a family subscription. Yeah, and so that's how... Even though my daughter couch. still uses Spotify and pays the $10, <laughs> she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> so you're double dipping I anyway. pay it, but you know. <laughs> Just in case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Well, okay, so, so you're using Apple Music, and I'm not seeing a lot of people, I'm curious, you know, if you're watching live, do you use Apple Music? And, and why that is, you know, what your reasons are behind choosing that. Obviously, ecosystem's a huge thing with anything Apple, though. 
I mean, that's that's hard to avoid Apple Music. Like it's just right. It's baked in. It's part of it. It makes sense on a lot of levels. And to you know, to Juan's point. Once you start listening to music, it, the actual interface doesn't really matter. You're getting most that's right. most yeah. of your time with any of these services. You're just spent listening. Yeah, so no, if that's, that's not true. recommending the right stuff. That's an issue. I, I mean, did try uh, Amazon Music for a while, and that sucks. That's true, and I didn't even put. <laughs> and that sucks. That yeah, I mean, you search for, <laughs> you search for songs, and it's like, oh no, we don't have that song. Yeah, yeah, and you know like, what? Okay. I, it's I free though. Like, it's free with the with the Prime subscription. It's free. Yeah. That's true. You, you know what? And I have Prime, and I have never used uh, Amazon Music. You can try it one day. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, try. well, you, you already said it do sucks, anything. so I don't know. Yeah. yeah, we'll maybe give that a shot. All right, Marie, what about you? Um, I'm Spotify. I was Apple for a while while mm -hmm. I had an iPhone and the iPods and et cetera. Okay. Um, but I was using Google Music, but happened into a Spotify gift card and just started using it from there. I think one of the biggest things, I would transfer... I would tr definitely try Google Music, mm -hmm. but I am so established on Spotify already. Yeah. That moving playlists, moving everything over. Yeah. It just, just does not. It, co it costs nine ninety nine, right? If, uh, if Spotify, it, yeah, yeah, I believe so. I think yeah. there's an. Upper That's how much tier. Apple Music will cost, also for like a single user. Mm -hmm. I think Spotify yeah. Family is. Fifteen, fourteen, ninety-nine. Yeah. yeah. So comparably, it's about the same. And even Title Music, I think their base one is nine ninety-nine. Yeah. Now, where you get the the. Well, that's not the high-end audio, correct? I think it's $20 a month for the super high-end audio. If you really want that, I suppose that's the place to go for that. But, Jeremy, what about you? So I've, t I've dabbled with all of these things. So years and years ago, when I got rid of my CD collection, I took all, I, I had 2,000 discs, I digitized them all, and I put them all up into the cloud with Google. And I was a big fan of Google for a while. I tried the, the Play service, the streaming service. Um, I moved to Spotify, and I, in my opinion, it's hands down the best. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Spotify. But the issue, you know, to Juan's point, the issue to me is increasingly I use the Amazon devices to, to stream things. And I'll mm -hmm. say, Alexa, do this. I, at first, I tried with Amazon's music service, and it sucks. It's just terrible. <laughs> like, it never so that's two it. sucks yeah. out of, uh, okay. But the problem is Spotify through Amazon is a terrible experience also. Half mm -hmm. the time it doesn't recognize what I said. The other, and I, I feel like I'm fairly articulate. I don't know. I could be inarticulate. Um, the other half of the time, it doesn't have the songs that I want, and I end up picking up my phone and actually inputting like this. So I'm, I'm looking, if, if anybody's out there and listening, I'm looking for an alternative that works effectively with Alexa. Yeah, uh, you know what, and that, that's... Which is just hurting because uh, I love Apple, Spotify. But. Amazon right. Music, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe there's a reason behind it. Um, yeah, that's a good point, because everything does need to have a good voice interface, I think. How about you, point. Greg? What do you use? I use Spotify. And actually, Spotify just came out today. They're working on a voice interface of their own, probably ostensibly to skip everything else, although in the end, we're all using OK Google or Siri or Alexa, ultimately, anyway. So I, I don't know how popular that will be just on Spotify, but that, that is something that they're working on. And I'm taking a look here on the, on the live chat. Um, I don't like Spotify. Bob just said that. I listen to albums, not songs to playlists. They do have albums on there. Me too. Uh, but too. Yeah, yeah, I can see that point. Uh, Keelan, I liked Google Play, but their interface is atrocious. And that's another big issue. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. How it works. And I haven't tried Google Play, but you, is it pretty bad or as far as the interface or it's it just it's it's like if an engineer designed an interface gotcha like here's your interface yeah. there yeah. you go it's pretty bare bones apple right. the apple yeah. interface is gorgeous yes i i never use spotify so i don't have anything to compare it with but yeah well, yeah it's from apple so it is it's good gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. yeah it suggests things for you it makes you your favorite uh mix uh playlist uh, yeah the other thing i'd like to bring up interesting point Whenever you get into a car, you never have Spotify. And there's always 10 streaming services that are built into the dashboard. And there's right. Deezer and Slacker and iHeartRadio and Pandora every single time. Oh, yeah, Pandora. None of which yeah. I want to use. None right. of which. Yeah. But the stuff that I want to use, I can't actually get in my car, which is kind of frustrating. Yeah. I think you can get it yeah. with uh, Android Auto, Spotify. Yes, yes through which, Android Auto. But you cannot get it with through CarPlay. No, really? Phone. CarPlay what? CarPlay, you have to use Apple Music. I just wonder about the business deals and that lead to that. Because the things that I want, I have to go through a lot of different hoops to get to. Uh -huh. you know, opening up Android Auto and connecting it just in order to get the Spotify app versus just having it baked into the dashboard like all those other services. Right. We're not there yet. <laughs> not there, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, uh, let's see, Dan says, leave Alexa, I use Spotify on my Google Home, and it never goes wrong. Uh -huh. So apparently Google Home, that's Ooh. where that's where they work together. I like that. So maybe there is something along this line. I don't have Amazon Alexa Music. at home. I have a Google Home. Really? At home. 
Okay. All right. Well, you already said Apple or Amazon Music. Yeah, Club, and so. Google Home doesn't work with Apple Music. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Surprise. there's a lot of there's yeah. a lot of conversation on here, but I would say overall, Spotify seems to be the one that everybody's using. I haven't seen a single title on here, uh, so I don't know. I guess if you're an extreme audiophile, that's probably where you're gonna go. So I, let's let's take a vote. What's the what's the death watch for title? Do we give them a year and a half? Do we give them a year? That that was gonna you know, ask. You know, how much Spotify can compete with yeah. with Apple Music? I mean, Apple is gonna it's throwing everything they have into yeah. the they Apple thing and how are you gonna I mean it would be like a small store you know trying to fight with Walmart yeah you know, it's mm -hmm. like well, going to Title's website right now, it seems to just be an advertisement for Jay Z's tour. Like that's that's it's literally the front page is get tickets I mean, to his tour. That is, and then up in the corner, title. oh yeah, start a free trial for Title. So I'm gonna guess it's pretty soon. I would say within the year. I mean, if they they keep sinking money into this, yeah. or maybe they're not anymore and they've just decided to leave it as it is. But you're right. I I mean, I don't know a single person who uses it. I signed up for my free trial when Prince died because that's the only place he could get Prince albums. Yes. And then as okay. soon as that month was done, it's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm good with Prince for a while. And that was, that was the only time that I used it. So, yeah, not a single person talking about that. That's, there's a lot you can always discuss with this. I mean, there's other things with, you know, if you want to get on the, the issue of artists being paid, I've heard those discussions, you know, Spotify that's true, huh? doesn't pay the artists a lot. And if that's a concern for you, you know, I don't know what service other than Tidal says they do says they pay more, but I, I don't didn't really Didn't Taylor know. Swift That's, cut a fight Taylor, with Spotify? I think Spotify? Taylor Swift did, yeah, cut out from there. But she's on Spotify now. She's yeah, on they, Spotify. They reach, they well, there we go. Agreement. Yeah, so we'll we'll see what goes down with that. But that's anyway. We we do love to hear your topics on this or your discussion on this and what you think about these kinds of things because it's something that we all use and it's fun to sit down and think about it and hear some other some other stories from what other people are using. And obviously, Spotify's a lot in there. I haven't seen a lot of Apple Music backing you up one, but <laughs> nonetheless, you you know what you like. And, and, and uh, don't forget about the silent majority that uses Pandora. That's true. Mm. Yeah, the Pandora people yeah. that are out there. We the know silent majority. You're afraid that's to come a, out and say it. That's it's, all Richard right. Nixon <laughs> quote, the silent murder. <laughs> All right, well, let's get on to our next topic here because we've got a few things to get to in a short amount of time. And this is a story that came out this week about uh, something. We, we've had different stories about this. A lot of companies, I think, are working on it. But now we have, we have an actual demo that looks pretty promising for a flying taxi, an actual autonomous electric flying taxi that is being tested out in New Zealand right now. And it comes from, uh, well, one of the backers of it is one of the former uh, Google founders. He's, he's involved with the company. And they had something a little while, while ago that uh, they, they've showed some other things that work with this. One thing was called the Kitty Hawk Flyer. The company is mm -hmm. called Kitty Hawk. This one now, though, is called Cora. And it's a two-seat machine with 12 wing-mounted rotors. So it enables vertical takeoff and landing, and then a pusher prop so it flies like an airplane once it's up into the air. And in theory, you would uh, hop into this thing. It flies itself to your destination. Um, and it has, I think, a 60-mile range on it, 93 miles an hour. The noise level is below that of a helicopter. I mean, it's got a lot of advantages that they're touting on this, and New Zealand's really pushing it. They actually want the service to be in use by 2022, and apparently regulations are really relaxed in New Zealand for this kind of thing. It's according to the article at digitaltrends.com, uh, I guess New Zealand's really trying to push this. So that makes me a little bit worried, though. <laughs> relaxed regulations is definitely an issue. And I guess uh, my question just to discuss this is, would you get in it right now? I will would get in it. This? I will get in it, but I don't want to be the first one. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I think that's how a lot of people feel. I will, that sounds interesting yeah. and appealing and everything, yeah. but I don't want to be, I, you know, I don't want to be the that first one. That video did not inspire in, in, uh, me to no. get nothing. That really? Looked, no. That looked like, like the it. model airplane video that I created when I was six. It looked like a <laughs> like giant drone around. for me. Yeah. Like a giant DJI drone. In it. Well, what would it What would it take for you to get in one? So, like, what are you looking for? I mean, looking at the video alone, just mm -hmm. as somebody who's not very familiar with the drones and the self-flying uh, planes Taxis, and everything, yeah. all of that, as a consumer, I look at it and I think, well... What happens, like, if you go through a flock of birds? Do, mm -hmm. you know, okay, that's a good point. Well, you have to have some rotors. LiDAR sensors so that it doesn't go in through the flock of birds. True. It's got to be some sensors in there. Okay. I, look, I think that the technology is 100% there. Mm -hmm. Most of every flight you've taken in the last 15 years has been completely autopilot. So yeah. that auto flying, drones themselves, very straightforward and simple stuff to pilot because there isn't very much up there. It's, there's nothing to crash into except for the flock of birds. <laughs> God forbid. Right. 
But th- that video, though, it's just like the thing was doing it. Uh, it did a VTOL, right? Vertical yeah. takeoff and mm-hmm. landing. Somehow, mm-hmm. even though there's no propellers that can make that happen on the thing. So right. I don't know how that was happening. Yeah, there's supposedly there's going to be there's uh, there's a what was it? Twelve rotors, I believe it was that at twelve rotors that'll and they just help gently will that. let yeah. it lower itself to the ground. That's what they're saying. Twelve wing mounted rotors to enable vertical takeoff. Look I don't know if I buy that part, but but on the other hand, everything Google does is pretty good. So mm-hmm. yeah, okay. yeah, you figure the guy is probably gonna. I mean, if he's gonna invest in this, obviously they're they're doing a lot of research. The, on the it, question but, is how much is gonna cost. That doesn't yeah. sound like yeah. Then, then Same that price is the bus. Then and they don't bring up anything right. about what the price is yeah. for, it's not for, you, for you. Good price. <laughs> two, two dollars, two dollars a ride. You I don't know, know if I want to yeah. haggle for that, for that kind of a ride. Uh, let's see. Dan yeah. is saying how are flying taxis going to work? Are they going to be regulated by air traffic control? Actually, we're going to be talking about that here in just a minute. I've got something on that. Uh, Courtney says I'll ride the taxi in 2030. And I think yeah. that's the other yeah. point is nobody wants to be the first one to do no. this. No. But it's going to happen. And there's, uh, you know, uh, Waymo is working on it. I believe Uber is definitely yeah. working on it. Um, I believe it's in Dubai they're going to start testing it out. Maybe even Dallas, Texas, they were talking about oh, testing out some of these. I live in Dallas, go. Texas. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so you can yes. go fly it. You can be that person. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the first one. Again, didn't they have something at CES? Yeah, that there was you could, a Chinese company talking that about you can, thing. But you can try it. I mean, I it didn't. seems to make, I mean, look, the, the rotor technology is pretty proven. The drone technology is pretty proven. But Everything adds up very yeah. effectively. Yeah. It even has a cute name. It's called Cora. Come yeah. On. Cora. What's <laughs> not to like about Cora? Are we taking a Cora or are we walking? That's <laughs> it rolls off the tongue. It's yeah. true. It does. Well, they're saying, yeah, by 2022, at least that's what they want. Uh, Core is planning for a commercial flying taxi service in New Zealand, launching before 2022. I tell you this. Every time I've been to New Zealand, I've taken one of these things. Yeah. <laughs> Just hop right around. What's the I've weather like in yeah. New Zealand? <laughs> um, I think it's probably pretty similar to Oregon, isn't it? I believe it's like uh, rainy and... I don't know if that mountains Lord of, Lord of Lord the Rings was filmed there. there yeah, yeah it's all Lord of the Rings. Yeah, so it's that's it's pretty icy, much it's what it is. It's hot, it's warm, it's cold. Yeah, it's all of those things. Uh, but either way, that is what the plan is. So I think if you you see this work there, obviously it'll start rolling out to other places. Uber, like we said, it's got its own aerial vehicle. Uh, Joby Aviation is, has one called the Volocopter, which that sounds just intimidating alone with the name of it, Volocopter. Uh, Airbus is working on one. So there's a lot of people working on this. Whether or not uh, people are going to use it is the, is the other question. You know, and that's can, can I think we, kind of answered that is nobody wants to be self driving cars first. Right, <laughs> self driving cars would be and yeah. Self driving cars are dramatically harder because there's all these other cars in the road. In yeah. the air, there's nothing except for this flock of birds we keep talking about. It's order, very easy to fly. Case planes. in point, flock of birds. Well, other planes. I mean, if, are there any planes in the sky right now? But there, if you look out the window, we'll see a hundred cars. Okay. See, you could fly right up here, right up here to the 10th floor, and that's where you would be. All right, just have a little bit of a mic issue there. So that's why I'm uh, putting my hand in front of uh, Juan's face while we're on the air. All right, on to the next topic, though. With this, talking about the, um, you know, how you would control it, what Dan brought up, and there are companies working on that, how to have air traffic control with this. And in Switzerland in particular, we've discussed it here on the show before about how they were, they've been doing, testing out some drone deliveries for medical purposes, and uh, which, which is a bold thing to test out if that's your first test with this is medical delivery. But they've got uh, some really intense plans on how to start managing actual drone delivery systems and how you would work that. And so in June of this year, they're planning to merge a bunch of data with the Swiss air traffic control operator SkyGuide. So the actual air traffic control system in Switzerland is going to merge with this company called, uh, merge data with a company called AirMap out of California. It's going to create a digital highway, essentially. And they've got a video kind of demonstrating it, which it's pretty, I mean, this, this is the thing we need to get actual commercial drone delivery. At least that's what I think. You have to have some kind of system to control this. If everybody's launching you know, hundreds of drones in the air above a city, we all know how dangerous that could be. This would be a guidance system, a virtual guidance system. And the, um, the video kind of demonstrates, basically they create a virtual highway. And then where buildings are, are these giant red blocks where the drone knows it can't go. And to avoid that, there's so many problems that could arise from this that I can see, but they are launching this right now. Uh, I want to see what you guys thought about this as far as this kind of control system. Do you think this is viable? It could be. Yeah. But, I mean, early stages right now, like we were talking about, there won't be that many in the air right yeah. now. So it lends itself to a little more, there's a little bit more leniency with mistakes. You could test it out first. I mean, but a mistake would be big, you know, if I mean, you, or could be, depending on what, what you're delivering. Worst case these. scenario, like, 
how hard would a drone have to smack into the building for yeah. it to cause yeah. any damage? It couldn't be that bad. And That's right, true. There is a, like a test phase, but then on the other hand, Amazon's working on these things, and they push a button and deploy 10,000 of them, and all of a sudden we have this issue. True. Right. And if you, if you think about this as like, I keep thinking about it as like Google Maps. It's like Google Maps for the air, right? And you have to have, there's got to be some way to map out everything. We already have the buildings mapped out pretty much in Google Maps. So it's mm-hmm. That's true. Of, of inflating that upwards and saying, you know, here's Washington, D.C., and you can't go over this Capitol building, but you can walk over, you can fly over Northwest 6th Street or whatever it happens to be. Um, it, it seems to make sense, but there's just none of it is done. Yeah. And if you think about how long it took Google Maps to become Google Maps, you think about App- Apple and how about the issues New, they had with New that. York? New York would be a, a mess. Yeah. It, yeah. It's well, a lot yeah. of buildings. With winds too going in between just that alone, a just that guidance system. In New York too. Especially over around. cities, it's going to be a real challenge. Yeah. And, and the airspace yeah. over cities is already kind of. And thinking about it, you know, let's say one has an issue and it fails, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you have something that weighs, I don't know how much does a drone weigh. Uh, it depends on depends what they have. 10, 15 pounds, then it's yeah. falling at a rate of... That's what I'm not I mean. good at, not good at science, but yeah. <laughs> you get my point. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be hit in the head with it. That's, that's enough to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, and that is definitely something that, that you would have to be concerned with. The other thing would be security. I mean, how mm-hmm. is this hackable? I mean, what would happen with that? And we, uh, I was talking about Riley producing your behind the scenes. Like, this seems like it's ready made for a science fiction, like movie where some oh my god they've hacked the drone highway oh, yeah. here's what's going yeah. on like this is and redirected all of them to your house yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> we have a half hour like i mean that's that's pretty much what what i think of when i look at this thing but yeah this you're talking drone delivery too so drone delivery yeah. so yeah it's maybe it's a 10 pound drone to start with but then say that they probably have some larger scale mm-hmm. ones for bigger products uh you're not talking about like delivering a car or something but say you're delivering a couple books and all yeah. of a sudden it's got 10 pounds worth of luggage baggage whatever it is and it weighs 20 pounds and crashes into another one and you've got 50 pounds worth of stuff falling out of the sky over somebody's head yeah it takes one person getting injured or killed from this for there to be a huge yeah fiasco yeah exactly i mean this this could be i mean regardless these companies are pushing for it eventually they're going to make it happen and that video yeah. looked complicated it looks it very complicated Watch out for this helicopter don't yeah. navigate over here redirect this path to this flock of birds over there <laughs> flock, of birds. <laughs> oh, here flock of birds we always forget about the flock of birds well you can check out that video too at digitaltrends.com we've got articles on everything that we're talking about with this but i i think you know i I am definitely a proponent. I want the drone delivery. Absolutely. I think it would be great. Yeah. But uh, again, yeah, maybe it's better that Switzerland's the first one to try this out. <laughs> you know, let New Zealand test out the air taxis. Let that uh, Switzerland test out the drone deliveries yeah. first. Also, I work don't want to go outside and look up and just see drones whizzing by too. Yeah, that's the other issue. I mean, if you if you do set up this highway and if it really does work as you as it's promised, you really could have drones flying constantly i mean what's the what's the limit of how much we want to deal with that drone rush hour drone rush hour exactly that's exactly what we could be dealing with so uh anyway that's again you can check that out digitaltrends.com the last thing i wanted to get to here today is again going along with the black mirror theme is this company that uh i'm going to try to pronounce these things the company (laughs) is called nectome and that what they ostensibly want to do is they are advocating Taking your brain when you die, freezing it, and maintaining it in such an embalmed state that it's, uh, I guess it's embalming with with cryopreservation. So they want to keep your brain in almost the exact same state it was as when you were alive, so that at a future time, they can upload all of your memories into a computer. Where this is this is altered carbon. This is what we're talking about right now. <laughs> like, this is where we're at. So, what what do you guys think about this? Do you think this is this is a something that that people will want? I don't. Would want you it. want it? Uh, Go ahead. Not working. Wanna, yeah, not working. I'll get it. Yeah, yeah, of course it's failing right now. We'll get it. I, I don't want to. There we go. We're we're good. I don't want my memories to be seen by other people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that aspect yeah. of it. Okay, yeah. I mean so. that does. I mean that's a great point. Like right. if you upload yourself to this company's site, who owns that consciousness yeah. later? So, uh, Nectome. <laughs> so that is the name of the company. We Nectome. have the rights to your happiness. You don't have to write right. license over the sadness yeah. part. You just take over certain parts of you. That's yeah. That's you, you mentioned Black Mirror. I keep thinking mm-hmm. I, I I just jumped on the bandwagon with this show. <laughs> oh, embarrassingly enough, you have and so much to go two through. is all about this, right? Let's yeah. let's back up through what happened twenty minutes I, ago, and here's what and here's my thoughts on the whole thing. Yeah, I never I never seen Black Mirror. <gasps> 
<laughs> what? Why? Oh I don't even God. know what you're talking about. I know it's a no, series no. on Netflix, but... It's good. That's all you need to know. Go I watch am it. frustrated with you right now, Juan. Uh, so, no, <laughs> you need to watch it. You have to watch it. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, no, that's, that's one of the things. So it's about future technology, and, but stuff that's not too far out. And this, in particular, is a topic of several of them. Um, so uploading, yeah, your memories so, to the Internet. So to, Kurzweil's been talking about the singularity for ages. I don't like yeah. technology stuff. And <laughs> yeah, part of me goes, this is all very futuristic and wacky mm -hmm. and crazy and maybe kind of believable, but then Elon Musk starts talking about this as well. Yeah. And at a certain point, when all of the people that are the smartest people are saying this is going to happen, mm -hmm. well, you know, maybe this is going to happen. I, right? So, you know, th if this is the way to preserve my brain such that down the road I can become Robot Jeremy, <laughs> Robot Jeremy, coming to get you. Um, <laughs> this is what it takes. They're then. starting the song. We're getting to the song. It's it's working out. Type it out. his mind in a drone and it's fine. <laughs> would say, yeah. Uh, but no, they, I mean, people are definitely working on this. I um, Over the summer, I, I was on this panel with a guy from DARPA, of all things, which is already intimidating. The, what is Defense the, Advanced Research Projects Agency. Yes. So one of the doctors in charge of that, and he was talking about brain interfaces. It was the actual topic. <laughs> and they are working on that stuff. He's like, no, we're working on, on ways. He's like, we're not there yet. But we can kind of see a path to where we can do this and actually upload memories. He's like, we, we have an idea of how to do it. So if, if I can sum up the entire show here, what did yeah. we learn in the show today, kids? So in 2030, <laughs> we're, in 2030, we're gonna have we're gonna be preserved as robots. What is this, yes. Mr. Rogers' name? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be delivering packages via the awesome. via the airways. Uh, we'll be flying in commercial drones, and uh, life is gonna be generally strange. Uh, that's that. And, I, we'll, and we'll all be listening to Spotify. Yes, and that's <laughs> that's clearly it, except for one. Except no, we so. no, no. <laughs> would take one. over the music industry. Yeah. Uh, Courtney says, I thought we were living in the Matrix anyway. Um, <laughs> Edward true. says, I would like to revisit some of my memories and delete them. So yeah, I can definitely understand that, too. I don't know. There's so many different things. Uh, also, Keelan wants to sign you to his label and make <laughs> Robot Jeremy coming to get you a song. So all right, we've got, a, we've got a record contract for Jeremy already out of this deal. Yes. So I think that's probably about it for today. And I want to say thank you to everybody tuning in to Trends and Benefits. This show is fun. Every week we have different topics, different things that we cover, from conventional technology to weird future stuff. You never know what you're going to get. And always a little bit of robotics in there. There's, there's got to be a robot. Jeremy was the robot for today. So <laughs> we even worked that in. And subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts from, or Spotify. Uh, make sure you get it there, too, so you can uh, get it every week that we put this out. And thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another episode. Robot Jeremy. Come <laughs> <laughs>